Let's turn attention to security now. Some youths in Plateau State have staged a protest over the incessant attacks and killings of locals by militia men in the Mangu Council area of the state. The youths are demanding the immediate removal of the Special Task Force Commander, Operation Safe Haven, who they claim has compromised their mission and is now unable to impartially perform his duty of protecting lives and property of natives. A correspondent in Plateau State, Funam Joshua, reports. Reactions continue to flow in over recent attacks and killings of locals, including women and children by gunmen suspected to be Fulani militiamen in the Mangu Council area of Plato State. About 200 people are believed to have lost their lives in the attack, with many properties destroyed. The attack has continued unabated across 34 villages in the Mangu local government area and environs for days now. The leadership and members of the Plato Youth Council come out in large numbers to protest these attacks and killing of locals. Wearing black clothes and carrying leaflets and placards with different inscriptions to express their displeasure over the situation. The group says the attacks and killings are acts of terrorism aimed at uprooting native villages and communities. The PYC is not happy with the commander of Operation Safe Heaven and the STF personnel deployed in the area. They claim the leadership of the Special Task Force has been compromised and is now supporting the attackers in the area against the natives. They want the immediate removal of the STF and its replacement with a mobile police force that they believe is not biased. We wish to state unequivocally that these killings and acts of terrorism are not coincidental no random happening, happenings. Rather, these are premeditated and calculated attempts, attacks that aim at uprooting native villages and communities to satisfy the inordinate territorial ambition and supremacy of the Fulani and their cohorts. To our greatest surprise, the Operation Safe Haven, under the command of Major General Abdusalam Ibrahim appeared to be totally overwhelmed and uncoordinated in its response to the merciless massacre of citizens. Indeed, there was no aerial deployment and support for troops to pursue and track down the so-called Fulani militias who we are in their hundreds. Some residents in the state also share their thoughts with us on the invasion. We have heard them say to us that, that it is farmer headers clashes, but it's not. So we are saying that the government should arrest those responsible and bring them to book. We are calling for the total of withdrawal of the Operation Safe Haven to be replaced by mobile police squadron. This will largely help because this is not the first time that such an operation or such a process has been set in, in motion here in the state and we've seen results. The Play 2 Youth Council are calling on the authorities to intensify more proactive measures toward putting an end to this dastardly act being perpetrated in various communities within the state. Phnom Joshua. TVC News, Joss. Minister of Interior Raouf Aregbeshola has asked security agencies to sustain the existing cooperation and synergy to achieve success in the fight against insecurity in the country. The minister stated this in Sokoto, where he was represented by Permanent Secretary of the Ministry, Tribal Belgori, during the inauguration of the Nigerian Security and Civil Defense Corps Command Headquarters. He says intelligence sharing among security agencies has helped in achieving successes, and this should be sustained. And now to Kaduna, where Governor Nasser Uerufai has approved the deposition of the traditional ruler of Piriga, or Piriga chiefdom, Jonathan Zamuna, and the ruler of Arak chiefdom, Ali Uyama. A statement signed by the Commissioner of Local Government, Umar Ahmad, stated that the deposition followed recommendation from the Ministry of Local Government in line with the provisions of Section 11 of the Traditional Institutions Law No. 21 of 2021. The traditional ruler of Iraq is accused of appointing four district heads instead of one approved for his chiefdom and his non residence within the locality. The traditional ruler of Periga was deposed over recent communal clashes between the Guri and Kitimi communities. 
According to the commissioner, the district head of Garu Kurama, Babangida Sule, will oversee the affairs of Piriga Chiefdom pending the appointment of a new chief. The council secretary of Arak Chiefdom, Goma Amadu, will oversee the affairs of the chiefdom pending a new appointment. And to other stories, staff of the National Biotechnology Development Agency have staged a peaceful protest to demand the recognition of their union by the management of the institution. The protest was brought to an abrupt end by suspected hoodlums, who, um, while the agency says it's probing the incident. TVC News senior correspondent Joke Adisa um, reports. In the last two years, there has been no love lost between workers and the leadership of the National Biotechnology Development Agency, NAPDA. A two-week ultimatum has now expired, and the workers say it is time for them to drive home their demand for recognition as a union. They are demanding payment of hazard allowance, capacity building, and promotion to deserving staff. The workers accused the Director General of withholding their check-up deals in the last two years and discrediting their union. The number one reason for this protest is because the DG has refused to recognize South Tri Nabda branch. We have written a series of letters to him. He has refused to respond to it. And he has, been make, he has made several attempts to discredit our trade union. And there are many issues wrong with the agency that we, we, are, we, we are supposed to bring to his notice. It was like that we are not recognized. So it looked so strange to us because during the inauguration, it was there, it was part of the people who inaugurated us when the national people came. The protest came to a hurried halt after a group of suspected miscreants infiltrated the workers and began singing a different tune. Security officials had a difficult time containing the group of young men whom the workers accused of being sponsored by the Director General. Fortunately, that despite the fact that we are coming to do peacefully, we are surprised to see people that just came into the agency to disrupt this peaceful protest. The Director General described all allegations against him as unfounded. It's not a, a union per se, if I may say it. Uh, my reasons are, the first of all, if a union is coming to an agency, there are steps that it need to take. One, it has to present its members with duly signed form. While he denies sending any group of miscreants, the DG says the agency is probing the incident and will take appropriate steps to forestall a recurrence. This year alone, we have sent not less than 15 people for PhD studies, not less than 30 people for master's study. Likewise, the disruption of the peaceful exercise notwithstanding, the protesting workers here have said they will continue to pick at the office of the Director General until he lends his to their cries. Joke Edsa, TVC News, Abuja. A bit of health now. A policy response following the dialogue at the 2022 Primary Healthcare Summit has been launched. The community based health research program is geared towards improving the health workforce as an avenue to achieve universal health coverage. And health correspondent Kemi Balogun has more details. Over time, the challenges faced by the gross inadequacy and inequitable distribution of the skilled workforce has become evident in health service delivery. To address this lingering problem, the launch of the community-based health research innovative training and services program is taking place. It was born out of the need to achieving the first step of the interrelated four-point agenda on primary health care transformation in Nigeria. The initiative will leverage our teaching hospitals and our federal medical centers to pull skilled health care workers to the primary level in our communities where they will routinely provide services and mentorship as well as build capacity of resident primary health care workforce. Only about 30% of primary health care workers have the right workforce. So what we're doing uh, today is to launch a scheme whereby uh, doctors, resident doctors from tertiary institutions uh, like teaching hospitals, federal medical centers, uh, will adopt a primary health care center and they will go there to provide practice, to do research. 
Building the capacity of adequate health workforce is necessary to deliver services to address the health needs of the population. We'll tap into the existing human resource for health and bridge the skills gap at PSC level by typing the expertise at high level of care. This needs to be well thought out so as not to make the PSC an extension of tertiary hospitals. The national health account shows that there are only about three doctors and four nurses every 10,000 people, deviating greatly from the global standard of 10 doctors and 30 to 40 nurses and midwives every 10,000 population. The CRISP initiative will not only make skilled health workers from government hospitals available to offer services in primary health care centers across the country, but it will also increase capacity and best practices across health workers in communities. Kemi Balugun, TVC News, Abuja. And Chairman, Senate Committee on Culture and Tourism, Rocha Sokorocha, wants government to leverage on the nation's diverse cultures and the creative sector to drive peace in the country. He was speaking at an event to commemorate the 2023 World Day for Cultural Diversity for Dialogue and Development. Helen Osamedeikin's reports, and after this report, we'll bring you updates in business. World Day for Cultural Diversity for Dialogue and Development is celebrated every 21st of May. It highlights not only the richness of the world's culture, but also the essential role of intercultural dialogue for achieving peace and sustainable development. According to UNESCO data, the cultural and creative sector is one of the most powerful engines of development worldwide. It accounts for more than 48 million jobs globally, almost half of which are held by women representing 6.2% of all existing employment and 3.1% of global GDP. Despite its contributions to the country, the sector still does not have the place it deserves in public policies and international cooperation. As Nigerians commemorate World Day for Cultural Diversity for Dialogue and Development, speakers at this event stress the need for the government to harness the industry to drive the development which the country needs. Our culture should take pre preeminence, even our judicial system. Our culture should take preeminence. And once we bring this to bear, growth is faster. But growth is slower when you apply other people's culture in growing your economy. So what I'm saying, there's a co-relationship between great economy and the culture of the people. Culture truly, it's a medium uh, that um, if we creatively exploit it, uh, we can be able to ensure that uh, we bring peace and sustainable event to any society that we can be able to imagine. The occasion provides an opportunity to celebrate the iconic Dr. Ladi Kwali for her outstanding contributions to the development of cultural industry. New generation, this, the younger ones, do not even know anything about Lady Kwali. And Lady Kwali has contributed so much to the development of culture. She's an iconic person in terms of uh, what she has done in promoting this culture. So that's why we're bringing Lady Kwali. We want the children to understand and know what Lady Kwali has done, what they can also do as children to be able to do that. These good children were shown works of art and their significance to the nation. Helen Osamede Ekins. TVC News, Abuja.